Hey guys, welcome to DevOps School. In this video tutorial, we are going to learn about Docker. It helps us to create, deploy and run applications by using containers. After going through this tutorial, I promise you that the concept and understanding of the Docker will be absolutely clear to you. But before that, let me ask you a few things. Are you dreaming of a career with higher pay and more responsibilities? Or are you ready to take your skills to the next level this year? Then start investing in DevOps School certification level courses which will help you to emerge skills for a wide range of entry level roles and as well as higher potential future positions. But with thousands of courses online and in classroom worldwide, finding the right one for your career goals can be difficult. You can consider our courses like Agile Developer, Agile QA, DevOps Certified Professionals, Site Reliability Engineering, DevSecOps and Masters in DevOps Engineering where you will have access to well-structured, easy-to-follow course content that has been developed and will be delivered by industry professionals. You can join on our training programs globally through online platforms and if you are looking for classroom workshops then we have regular sessions available in Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai, Delhi NCR, Mumbai and in Pune. Simply compare our many courses, find the one that suits your style and schedule best and start today. And now I am going to talk about how to debug containers, how to de develop an image, how to share an image. Okay. So these are the three topics which I am going to talk about. So before that, I would like to share one URL with you and that URL is this one, tutorial docker and commands. Okay, so this, com this place I have, I have mentioned all the commands and categorize into the various things like working with the containers, these commands. So many of these commands we have already covered. Now this is the command for the monitoring command. And here you have logs, yes, stats, top and event. So let's talk about it. So here, now if you want to debug the container, one of the best way to debug the container and, and my environment I think is somewhere here. One of the best way to debug the container is docker logs okay you see here this is the docker logs if i see docker logs and i'll get to know the what is the problem in the containers error message now if you want the docker uh, the the if you want the live log then what you can do is docker attach which we have done it and you can see the live log of any of this container and live log will be there so I just kill this because I right now I don't need it. That's one of the way. Now, next one is PS command, which you know already. Now stats command, which is very powerful. So you must try stats is, uh, which will give you that how much each container is using CPU, uh, memory and uh, net IO input and output. So this is the way you can, in fact, you can uh, monitor the each containers also, container byte also and you get this in information about the CPU and memory uses. Now, after that, there is one command you should see top, docker top. So first ps docker top. Now docker top will help you to find out the process. Again, understand that docker, docker top will help you to find out the process of the container, but the process of the container in the host machine. Yes, that's true host machine cut. So here you see, this is the process is of the host machine of that particular container. So if you want to know, okay, this particular container is running and I want to keep a track of it host machine, then Docker top will help you. Okay. So that way you can do the uh, process monitoring also, log monitoring also and all. Now there is one command which is there, event command, events command. So what exactly events command will do? So events command basically will help you to monitor the monitor the docker d docker d event. okay so you see here docker events and it's returning nothing but what i will do i'll create one container from the different console centos sudo hyphen s and docker hyphen uh, run hyphen itd ubuntu there's one container which i'm creating and you see 
now docker d is returning so it created a container connected with the network and then started the container so these are the things it is doing so docker events will help you to monitor the monitor the uh, the the the, uh, the containers and logs and stuff like that so these five commands will help you to help you to monitor the containers docker uh, uh, applications and uh, docker d and many more so guys did you understand this any questions guys did you understand these five commands yeah okay now next question is next question is how to develop an image so guys understand that first we need to understand the anatomy of the images okay and then only we can develop the images okay so let's understand the anatomy of the images in short way and i need a ppt help from from here so look at this so i told you very clearly and please uh, revisit the same thing again one more time what is an image so read it one more time here see here so image is a nothing but a file system but what kind of file system so it has a root file system which is a starting with and then application file system different different file system so this is what it happens so when you run a containers one copy of the image is getting attached to the container so this is what it happens when you work with the images so now the same thing we have to little bit deep dive into it and now we'll do that so let's get started Ha. Huh. So look at this here. Image is made up of the file system layered over each other. Yeah, that's true. I've been telling you image is nothing but a collections of file system and which is layered over each other. So what we call it, these file system, we call it layer actually. Yes, that's true. This file system, we call it layer. So layer zero is one file system layer 1 is one file system layer 2 is one file system like that so each image is layered over each other and that is nothing but a file system now multiple layers forming together and creating one image so by the way you can create from three layers three file system how many images you can create so you can create a three images so you can create one image from the layer 0 also you can create one image from the layer 1 also the, you can create a, one image from the layer 2 also by the way let me tell you here if you create a layer 0 image container then you will get only layer 0 but if you create a container from the image 1 you will get a layer 0 and a layer 1 also if you create a uh, image a container from the image 2 then you will get a layer 0 layer 1 layer 2 file system also okay so this is the way the image anatomy is working now guys each uh, file system each layer you have a different different changes of the file system which i said all the time base image layer 0 is having the root file system i have to talked about it so base image has a root file system and top of that any subsequent layer you have a let, let's say nginx jdk this that so it can be anything as such okay are, are you getting this this scenario guys are you able to understand this yeah hello yes sir. yeah so these are the things so now with that if you go here from this layers you have a three layers and which we have one image from that image you can power multiple container yes you can power as many containers you wanted so see here single image shared by multiple containers okay so sharing the multiple containers now each layer has a uuid 
okay this is a universal unique id uu id so that how can you identify these layers and these layers is nothing but the file system how can you identify so you can identify these layers using the uu id okay so here you have a uu id each layer you will have a uu id now you must be wondering what is this uu id so remember when you pull that any images so you download something downloading 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 you might have seen it how, how many of you have seen those yeah yeah so these layers has a uu id okay each layer has a uu id and that is how you identify that okay so now with that let's hard code this rule this rule is very important for all of us we need to understand this rule so how basically these layers works together and forming one image and powering the containers we need to understand so what happens the first rule is higher layer always win when there is a conflict in layer R remember this rule one more time please read it higher layer always win when there is a conflict in a layer so now let me help you to uh, explain in a simple way so here what happens understand this this is the one layer okay and there is a one more layer okay in this layer you have a one directory which is called opt and under this opt there is one file called raj.txt okay i'm not able to draw properly but understand that raj.txt the content of this raj.txt is i love india okay this is the content now in the layer this is the layer 0 okay and this is the layer 1 in the layer one you have a one opt same same directory same structure same directory opt and the same file name also raj.txt and in this content you have i love docker so now you tell me if you create a container from this image so inside a container what you will see what you will see apply this first rule now so what you will see tell me guys the layer one layer one so you will see the content is i love devops ah sorry docker okay so yeah that is the first rule so yes always here in this case in a docker sense always higher layer always win when there is a conflict in the layer now this question is who is doing this layering and who is managing the anatomy of the layer union mount guys union mount you have in the windows also union mounts you have in linux also so you union mounts doing the all the image layering and accomplishing through the union mounts now read the third line please so what he is saying union mount allows to mount allows to mount multiple file system over top of each other but combining all of the layers single view giving the application os single regular everyday file system okay so all this magic which is done by is union mounts union mounts what they do they merge all the file system all the layers into one and inside a container uh, as if it is like operating system but it's not okay and all layers are read only except top layers let's understand this look at this here here you have a boot file system which is kernel on top of that there's images you have the three layers one is the root file system and nginx and updates so what happens these are the read only you cannot you cannot modify these layers so what happens when you create a container all these layers so let me let me uh, put it in uh, some drawing way so let me see here so what happens when you create a container so what happens these all three layers getting merged together and create one writable layer yes that's true this writable layer is, is, is it is a result of all these three layers so anything you write here in the container so and the container get attached to this writable layer yes see here 
this is writable layer and container get attached to the writable layers so whatever you have in this it get merged together with the help of the union mounts and create one writable layer and this writable layer get mounted to the container i'll show you during the demo okay so this is the way okay so back to the slides okay so now if you want to understand more about it you have to understand boot fs root fs uh, we have spent a lot of time already so i'll just ignore it now the question is this is the final anatomy of the images what you get it so here you see here you have a four writable uh, read only layer which is a layer so four layers got merged together and created one writable layer that writable layer is a part of the container so that means that writable layer you see inside the container that means you can write that writable layer through the container so one writable layer will be created each container one per container okay each layer has a uuid and that is the anatomy of the image some of the some of the commands you can use it to check this images docker images you can check this and some of the commands i'll teach you so guys did you understand that what is the image okay now let's prove it so now let's prove it so here what i'm doing right now i'm proving whatever we discussed so guys if you go to this uh, this machine how many containers i'm having i have so many containers so what i'll do i will delete all the containers so docker stop and remove all containers <coughs> now stopping all the containers removing all the containers and here how many images i'm having multiple images i'm going to remove all the images also done okay what is this rmi right done so guys i deleted all the images here you see docker images oh still there's the images so we must be having containers also let me check no containers let me delete this so it says unable to there's a conflict actually no problem so i'll delete one people one by one so first thing this one and then second one this okay so guys i deleted all these images you see here nothing is there docker images nothing is there now the question is where the image layers will be stored so you have to look for this docker info where is this root directory var lib docker now what is the storage driver overlay 2 so i'll go to this location cd and go to the overlay 2 guys this is the place where the layers will be stored so if you see here dos hyphen sh du hyphen sh see the zero bytes so there is no layers what i will do i will download one image ubuntu okay i am downloading one of the images see here guys four times is doing pulling 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 that means this has a four layer now can you check this see here one two three four each layer has a uuid unique identification okay so how do we see that so look at this here guys <coughs> there is one images i want to know i can inspect this image inspect this image see layer four you should read all this stuff one by one so how do how do we know how many commits how many layers got created at a time i mean how many layers got created at what time so you can use the history command see here first time it got committed 72 mb second time third time fourth time and this is got images okay so 
this is the image now this image this image which is the base image which is the root uh, image 0 layer 0 so now what i will do i'll just play with hyphen h hyphen hyphen max depth is equal to 1 see this is the root file system which is the highest 60 67 look at this here go to the diff location have you seen this somewhere this file system have you seen this somewhere have you seen this yeah this is like a linux yeah linux file so, system yeah so it is a part of the root file system you see that so guys this is the layer now what will happen i told you what will happen when you create a container all this layer all this layer get merged to into one layer and that's a writable layer can you check this so docker run hyphen itd ubuntu i'm creating one container see i created one container you see how many you got it layer one layer you see you can ignore this one because this is a initialization du hyphen sh there's no much size but you can see that this size du hyphen sh see 77 mb so how many so all these layers got merged here if you see the df hyphen kh see here one layer one mount two layer two container i'll create one more container and you see two mount i've been telling you containers each container get one mount because of mnt namespace mount namespace so this is how it works so this is the things so that's what i've been telling you each layer each image consists of multiple file system whereas the bottom one is a root file system subsequent layer is basically uh, the application file system when you uh, who is doing this layering and stuff like that union mounts which is there in your operating system and when you create a container uh, from the image all the layers get merged together and become one layer and that get mounted to the containers user space see here now did you understand that what is an image what is an image did you understand that guys so these are the commands i run in order to prove that what is an image i'm going to copy it here so you can try after some time what so when when we when we run the container uh, the size of the container would be the, the sum of all the images right correct 100 percent correct because it's merged now right you see yeah. here i'll show you this here look at this df hyphen kh see here it's a merged see here merged all this merged in the new content new layer here so i got the two additional here this is the one and this is the one because i got a two containers here now what will happen you know one thing the moment you stop the container this this merge layer will get disappeared let me show you here i am stopping the both the containers okay look at this i am stopping and see disappeared this merge layer but if i start one more time see appeared so it's a runtime environment guys they will do that immediately whenever you run this so when your application running you will give you will get pid you will get network namespace you will get uh, uh, mount when you are not running you will have only the flat file system so it's a dynamically allocations got it did you all understood this what is an image right. okay guys now next question is how do we develop an image so guys i will not complicate too much okay i will not complicate too much because it's a pretty huge session it's a one day session but i will give you the how to create images so one method is using existing container you can create one image 
ओके यूजिंग डॉक्टर कमेट दिस इज अ मैनुअल प्रोसेस ओके एंड सेकेंड मेथड इज यूजिंग डॉक्टर फाइल टिपिकली पीपल क्रिएट थ्रू डॉक्टर फाइल ओनली इट्स अ डॉक्टर फाइल दिस इज यूजिंग डॉक्टर बिल्ड कमांड बिल्ड कमांड ओके एंड इट्स अ ऑटोमेटेड प्रोसेस यू कैन यूज फॉर द सी आई प्रोसेस नो ऑटोमेटेड प्रोसेस so here these are the two ways in which you can create an image using the existing container using docker file okay now first one i'll show you so let's have one requirement my manager said rajesh can you do one thing can you create one uh, image which has base as a ubuntu behavior as a ubuntu and which has a git and uh, uh, some software like uh, anything whatever you want okay so and copy some files some files some uh, application files and set environment variable environment variable and something like that so these are the small requirements what my manager set so what i'm going to do this i will not do right now okay i'll show you through manual process so let's 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 let me show you here so what we are having right now docker ps i got the one container docker attach here what i want here i want uh, this is i am inside the container and what i want what what i want i want to want to i got it git i want to install git so let's install in apt how do you install git apt git install git says git is not there so let me update this operating system i am updating the operating system i am inside the container remember i that i did now i am installing the git i press y remember y okay so this this file is there now what else you want you said like copying some environment uh, some files right so i have to come out of this control pq okay so here what file i want to copy so i will copy some file touch devops school dot txt others let's go into some other directory some files will be there right no no files sir let me create one file so vi devops school dot <clears throat> this is the, your application file html just fake file okay some code is there some fake file it can be zip tarball whatever it is so what i will do docker ps i think i'm using this container so docker cp what this file cp this this file to which container this file container where you want to copy tmp okay now if i do the docker attach i'll just go and verify is the file is there inside the tp a, a, t, a tmp or not so go to the tmp and the file is there no problem everything is good so now i completed the work of what my manager asked and some set, setting of environment also export you can do that bash search whatever it is you did this in control pq okay now i am going to create one image for us so this image has a git can we verify exec this git see git is there but this container sorry so this container has a git but this container has not git because i did not install it anything see here git is not there so i am going to commit this see here i told you using existing container using the docker commit you can do manual process and commit and create one image so docker commit what hyphen m adding uh let's put it ubuntu plus update plus a git plus some file application file and then which container do you want to commit this container you want with the image what image you want to give it this image done so i am con co committing that and here you see i got the new image this is my image this image has a git you see the size so this image this image has a update plus git now if you want to see that docker history ubuntu this is the primary image docker history and this my image which i created so see here till here it's ubuntu and this is the one more layer got created and this layer the size is 124 mb and this image you have 
update plus git plus that application whichever I copied. Did you understand that guys? So if we use this image, uh, the writable layer is above this, right? No, if you use uh, image, no, it's not writable. It's a locked layer. This is locked now. When you create a container, then merging will happen and then we will create a writable. Remember, container is an image, right? Yeah, this is the image. Yeah. So on top of this, we will get a writable, writable, uh, writable uh, space. Layer. So what in this time, what will happen if I create one container from this? You can create a container, no? What's the problem? ITD. I created a container. Now here, this container, which I created from this image, it will have the git docker docker what uh, exec container get see so now this container will create one writable layer merging by merging all the layers of images did you understand that guys yeah so guys i taught you how to create an image using existing container so these are the some of the things which i did and makes sense okay so now what i'm going to do is this is a manual process okay this is manual process but same thing you can do through docker file also but how i'll tell you how so you are going to write a docker file with the instructions so first of all you have to select base image ubuntu who are you maintainer Maintainer, 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 maintainer. Who are you? Rajesh Kumar. DevOps at the rate of dot XYZ. Now, what do you want inside that container? Run. What? APT get update. What do you want else? Run. What do you want? APT get. Same thing I'm doing, but this time automated. Half and Y. What do you want? Run. Not run. Copy. Copy. What do you want to copy, by the way? So, what do you want to copy? So, this file. I want to copy. From where? Root location. Copy. To where you want to copy? TMP. Okay? Inside the container. Now, you want to set the environment variable? Raja home. Home. What do you want to set? Environment variable. Let's say something like uh, RRR or something like that. So this is your Docker file. Yes, you have to spend a little bit of time understanding this. But manual process, if you know strongly, then you only you can automate this. Now let me see. Let me create a Docker file. That image. You can do much more things. So here, vi Docker. So vi docker file and this time command would be the command automated command would be build command. So let's do the docker build. What image you want? T F F F image name I'm putting F F F dot. So a spelling mistake in docker file. Is it? VA Docker file. Ah, okay. So if okay, no problem. If it is not a Docker file, that command should work. But if it is not a Docker file, I have to add one more thing. Hyphen F. This file. So if the file name is not a Docker, you can keep it any file, but you have to use hyphen F. That's good. So this time what? Okay, there's a problem here. Hyphen T should be here. So hyphen t is a tag, right? Yeah. Ah, tag. See, automated. This command, if you have a Docker file written, you can run this command and the image will be created. Now, image, I have a, some stupid name I have given it. Let's come, let it come, and we'll talk about it. And done. So image is done. Can you see that Docker images? See here, FFF. Can I create one container from this? Have an ITD FFF. Now, can we validate here? Docker attach. 
I'm going inside a container and here I'm inside a container. Can we validate? Do you have this file ntmp lstmp? Yes. Do you have a git? Yes. Do you have environment variable raja home? So clear the screen first. E N V. See, where is the Raja home? Here it is. So, guys, this is the way you can write a Docker file. Now you must be wondering what are the other options you have. Again, look at any any image, Docker Hub, Jenkins. And by looking at the, their implementation, you can learn very fast. So these all official images, Docker file is available on the internet, uh, GitHub. You can refer it. See here, for example, if we were using this one from uh, morning, right? Click on the Docker file. And this is the Docker file. Same thing, if they see that this is the Docker file of Jenkins which you are using from uh, morning. See, from run, ARG for setting the variables in the Docker file, ENV, ENV, run for volumes, run, ENV, run, copy, ARG, ENV, ARG, ARG, run. So these are the way. Port exposed, exposed. If you want to run user as a different user, user. Okay, but this user has to be there. So if you look at this here, somewhere it has created that user Jenkins. Here. User ID, you see the command user ID, group ID. So here they are running as that user. Copy, copy. And two important things which you have is entry point and CMD, which I will let you explore. Okay, so guys, did you understand that the whole things? How do you create images? I have one doubt here. Yeah, tell me. Is that, is that uh, there is a Jenkins uh, image we created? It is available in the Docker Hub we created. Mm -hmm. Shall I use that in the inside of Ubuntu? That is, we have another image like Ubuntu. Shall mm -hmm. I use inside that Docker file? Can uh, uh, what is it? Install Ubuntu Docker? Can yeah, I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Base image has to be there. See, if you use Ubuntu, it's a base image. You can use from Jenkins also. You can do that from Jenkins. Any images you can use from as a base image. What is happening? You know, from this image, there is one container created. This will be written. 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 Will be written automated way, and then create a one image tagged with. FF, uh, tagged with FFF. Got it? Guys, are you finding any difficulties? Yeah. Yeah. So basically what you have to do guys, first thing you learn about, see the steps. Let's discuss about the steps. First thing you learn, how do you set up your applications in VM? In VM, forget about the container. Same steps, whatever you do in the VM, you put it in the Docker file and then build it. You get an image, that image will get you the container. You have to only select the base image like I said, Ubuntu, CentOS, Fedora, Debian. RHS, SUSE, what exactly, HP, is that, you know. Base image is the root file system. Who has created a base image? Official vendor of itself. You can create your, your base image yourself also. But I'm not confusing the too many topics right now. So, guys, did you understand this? Yeah. yeah. So, now, you create an image from the container, if you feel comfortable. You create images from the Docker file. But the question is, how do we share with other people? How do we share with other people? So guys, there are so many ways you can share the images. But here I'm talking about the tarball. You can create a tarball and share the images. And there's one way, hub.docker.com. Yes, you can use it for the, you can use the Nexus also, but we don't have right right now. So we are using tarball and hub.docker.com. So let me do that. So guys, here, look at my screen here. First thing is, where's is images? Images is half FFF. This image. So, what I will do, docker ps hyphen a. I have so many containers. Let me stop this. I, let me stop this container. 
I stop all this container and then I'll remove it also, clearing environment. Okay, now here it is. Okay, now you have no containers, guys. So I can, I have a few images. See here. I am going to delete that FF. Oh, first, I have to take a backup, right? So I'm going to create a tarball. So save in what output? Which file? So let's create a tarball. Name it anything, but which image? FF. So I created a tarball. Now, tarball, you can give it to anyone, whichever you want to. So if you really want to understand that image anatomy, untar it go through each and every file research and you will learn, love learning this but right now i want to create and share the images so let's say you have I have to act like a different guy so i don't have that image which one image fff i'm deleting manually okay so fff i deleted you see that the file the image is not there so someone has given me tarball and he has asked me okay do one thing get the images from here so what i have to do load hyphen input hyphen input which is fine FFF. i load it as a different guy i'm acting like a two guys remember and then i got an image wonderful so the, using the tarball you can also you can also share an image we save and load is a command you can use that did you understand this guys Did you understand that? Yeah. Now, how can I share with the git uh, hub.docker.com? So for that, you have to have account, guys. Anyone can recreate account and actually you are going to do that now. Okay. So you go, you're going to hub.docker.com. You're going to register an account. It's like a GitHub. We have done it GitHub. Same way. So you'll register on account. I have accounts already, so I'm not going to register it. Sign in. Login, I have password stored. Okay, and here I will create a repository. Remember, image is inside a repository. So I create a repository. I'm creating a repository. What? Broad. Uh, what is that? Friday. Broad Fry. Okay, Broad Fry. So public uh, repository I'm creating. One private and ultimate public repository you can create. It's free, free of cost. Now, my image is this one. Understand that. DevOps schools slash broad fry. Broad fry. So, broad fry. Can I, can I have it? So, see that here repository name is DevOps schools broad fry. But here, my image name, repository name is what? FFF. So, it's not matching. So, what I have to do as a user, Docker login. By default, it login to the dockerhub.com. So, my user name is DevOps school. Password, I won't tell you. And I logged in. Did I? No. I think user and password is wrong. DevOps schools. I think I forgot the password, maybe. So, no problem. I'll just try one more time. DevOps schools. Oops, sorry. DevOps schools. Yes, got it. Okay, so I logged in here. Okay, now what I am going to do? Docker images. Docker push. You have to do push. Remember, pull, no, push. Where? Hub.docker.com. FFFF. So here, this image is there. It's saying access is denied. Why? Because FFFF's repository is not there. So what, what I need to do? I need to match the repository name. So for how you can match this repository name? So I'm going to tag it docker tag what fff and with to what so to this one see here docker images now you see this name and this name which is a repository name matching with the same image id same same file so can i push this this guy now docker push this one and now anyone in the whole world those who want ubuntu plus git plus that or that 
he can pull my image how let me push it and i'll show you done you see here this is done and now refresh this this is the this is a private view and you have to go to the public view public view means anyone can see that so anyone who wants my image public view they will pull it see here they will pull it now how many commits how many push i have done see here one push i have done it the latest few few seconds ago see that so guys this is the way you create a repo, uh, re, uh, accounts over there everyone should do that actually and you can share an image using hub.docker.com something similar process we have in an access also okay so you have to create a repository upload push that repository pull it and from there all the things can so guys did you understand that now how can we share an image everyone yeah so now guys let's recap the stuff what i did here i tried to help you to debug the containers so here i you can inspect the containers you can see the logs of the containers you can attach the containers and also experience that you can see the stats you can see the process you can see the top you can debug beam and mode also and the using event command now then we understand what is a docker image and i gave you a little bit of demo on the docker image image is nothing but a combination of layers and managed by union mounts and read only uuid when you when you create a container all the layers get merged into the one merge layer and that's get mounted to the container so all this thing i showed you these are the commands i run now how do you develop an image using existing container these are the commands i run mainly it's basically docker commit how to create an image using docker file so you write a docker file build it and then how to share an image tarball and using registry so guys now we'll spend some time on the questions and answer tell me any questions which you find it mm -hmm. Um, so actually, uh, I don't know. The discussion goes to Amarnath. Uh, do you are you aware of uh, how do we set up a Docker on our desktop? So what is the mm -hmm. procedure of doing it? Yeah, just raise raise a ticket, Amit. You can get it done. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, you need to mention uh, uh, Docker desktop. It will be done. Oh, perfect. Yeah. If you liked our Docker session so far. Please enroll our general membership for 399 plan to get access of all the parts. Along with that, you can access our other tutorials such as Docker, Ansible, Jenkins, Terraform, Splunk, AWS, Azure, and various other DevOps related premium tutorials with our channel membership. If you would have any issues with our channel membership, you can drop an email to us at contact at devopschool.com or you can also unsubscribe from channel membership anytime if you don't want to continue or did not like the video. To get our channel membership, click on to the join button, select the 399 plan and grow your skills immensely. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries, we will reply to them at the earliest. Thanks for watching.